So what we want to do is we want to create a Blazor app that uses this Swagger API that we have running in Azure. So the API is a .NET API, uh, but we want to create a Blazor app that accesses it. And doing so is remarkably simple. So we'll start off in Visual Studio, create our sample Blazor app, and we like to do things in iterations. So our very first goal is just you know, get our default uh, Blazor app started, make sure it runs, and then we'll start adding our client, then we'll add the uh, info from the client. We want to do a Blazor WebAssembly app so that it's a thin client app that only runs on, uh, on the browser. Here we are, and we'll, we'll, we'll leave the defaults default for now. Um, what we will do, though, is make sure that we're on .NET 6, which we are. Um, authentication type none. We do want it to be HTTPS, and we don't want a progressive web app for now. So create, and the reason we're doing this is we often find ourselves having to access APIs. The typical pattern is to create a server, uh, service client for it, and we shouldn't have to do that. So we've got our app, so we'll hit F5 and make sure that it runs. And you know, uh, this will at least get us all, all of our NuGet packages restored. But to no one's surprise, it runs just fine. Are you aware of any differences between .NET 5 and .NET 6 for the Blazor app? Um, .NET 6 includes some additional validation that, uh, you know, kind of in, it, there's enforcement around better coding standards. Uh, but I think there's also uh, significantly better performance. Um, here we are. So the Blazor app works just fine. We've got our sample Blazor app. We have some pages over here that we don't want, but we'll leave them alone for now. Okay, so now what we would typically do at this point is we would go in here and we would create a service client uh, and then hook up that service, um, create an interface for the service, and then create an implementation of that service. And it would take us a while, but we, we don't actually have to do any of that. What we can just do is right on the project, we just right click on the project uh, and go down to add. Here we are, add. And what we want to add is a, um, a service reference. So this other thing down here, connected service, is also useful if you're adding Azure uh, resources like a blob or what have you, blob storage. So let's go ahead and add a service resource. Um, so we are adding, as you can see there, it's Swagger. We're adding an open API. Uh, this is pretty simple. So we can use a file, but we want to use a URL because we'll make updates. So here is our API. You can see that it ends in the JSON. Uh, and then we have to enter our class, so we'll call it our uh, API client. Uh, and then the, the namespace, so for us, this is our Blazor sample. And we're using a, an API that, that we recently built for our project, but uh, this could be any API that you, you want to point to. Exactly. So we'll hit finish. It will do some work, and there we go. It succeeded. Can hit close. Uh, now the interesting thing that we'll note here is that it's not anywhere in here. You, you you won't be able to find the API in here. What you'll find is open API folder that has the swagger. Um, if, however, you look at the project file. Uh, you'll see that we've added this new group here. Uh, and you can see it right here. It's the co automatic code generation. Um, we've got the code generating options here, the name, the class name, the uh, namespace, and then also the URL. So if you do ever want to change it, you can just change it. OK, so now that we have the client created, let's actually use it. I have this. Blazor extension that will allow me to quickly add um, a component, including all the code behind the custom CSS. And 
everything. So right here is my Blazor component. We'll create our custom page uh, and we'll call it our, our API list page. Okay, there we go. Uh, and with that extension, you can see that not only do we get the page, uh, we also get the code behind and the custom CSS. Um, so before we do anything else, let's go and try to access our client. What we'll do is we will uh, do an override for the on initialization and we'll choose the async initialization because our API uh, is async. Um, and now what we'll do is we'll create an instance of our API, uh, of our API client. So our client equals, I just realized I've forgotten the class name, but that's okay. We can just go back into the project file and go and get the class name. Okay, so the namespace is API client, class name is Blazor sample. This is a good reason to name your class as well. API, so, so we'll just do new Blazor sample. Uh, and you can see there's a problem because Blazor sample requires two initialization parameters, the host URL and an HTTP client. Um, so let's go ahead and be good citizens and give ourselves a base URL that's here. Of my clipboard momentarily. And let's also be uh, good citizens and give ourselves HTTP client. We are. And we'll add the base URL, we'll add the HTTP client. Uh, and now we've got a working client. Uh, and what we can do from here is we want to render one of the things. So in our API, we return uh, uh, something called a pipeline. Okay, so uh, the common pattern for uh, rendering these things, because we want to render our pipelines, is to uh, make a property. So we'll have a property coded for us. Uh, in this case, the property that we want uh, is a I collection of pipelines. Pipeline, and we'll call it available pipelines. And IntelliSense is working really well there and actually filling in all the things. Uh, available pipelines. And here's where the, the magic really happens. And you can see we've got all the things from our swagger right here. And there is get pipelines async. Before I forget, before we start working on the rendering of this, we need to uh, go and grab our base URL. Of course, this is our, our first use of the pipeline. We won't leave it here. We'll, we'll make sure that it is injectable following that Blazor pattern, but we'll let's get it working first. Okay, so the base URL doesn't have the swagger information. It's just purely the base URL. Um, there we are. Uh, so now we are setting up the available pipelines. Let's go to the render of this API. Okay. Uh, we need the Blazor component, so we'll, we'll set the page to be. So now when we go to slash API, we, we should get this page. Uh, we want to do the for each.
available pipelines. And this will just, you know, show what we wanted to show. So for now, we'll just do a quick, quick H2 with a name and we'll do the pipeline name, which I think it is P dot pipeline name. For anyone curious what these pipelines are, these are actually NextFlow pipelines. NextFlow project we're working on. And that is it. So we'll, we'll hit F5. So, so far what we've done is we've created the sample Blazor app. We've created the API client. We're calling the API client. Uh, and we're retrieving pipelines. Our sample page, is, everything still compiles, so that's always a good sign. If we go to slash API, we should see the list of pipelines. Uh, we didn't put in any code in for uh, rendering, but there we go. So we were able to go and fetch the pipelines. And um, this is definitely a, a really quick way to get started, but we should really go and take the next step. You're not going to want to have multiple components where you're doing this, you know, create new HTTP client, create, set the base URL. Um, we, we don't want to do that. Instead, what we want to do is we want to set these things up once um, and just have them injected into every component where we need them. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. First of all, let's do the, um, we'll just copy all this code, putting it in my clipboard. We'll go over here to programs uh, and we want to add so we can already see there's a one scoped service here so let's add that http client or that that service api client as another um, scope service you can see intellisense knew what i was going to do uh, yeah i am going to indeed add a scoped service but instead of doing that why don't we add a named scope service of the type laser sample okay we'll give ourselves a little bit of room here white space is our, our friend laser sample and if we remember it's got those two parameters that we've got to provide. Uh, the first is the base URL, um, and the second is an HTTP client. So for, for now, I'll just I'll just put in a uh, empty string, and we'll fill that in with something from configuration. Then we'll do our HTTP client. Uh, okay, so that should give us our scope service, and of course we want the uh, URL. So we, we could hard code the URL here, but what we really want to do is go and get it from uh, configuration. So builder.config, and this is treated as a, an array, so let's put it. So we've added that config, uh, so we need to add a config file. You can see there's not one here. Uh, fortunately, done that makes this very easy. We want to do add, and I think we have to do a new item. And this is really easy because we can just search for app settings. Here we are. Here's our app settings file, uh, and we'll move down here and see it's appsettings.json, which is what we want. It opened it up for us and it automatically added a setting in here that we don't want, but that might be useful. A base URL and um, we can go and grab it from this file. Make sure this is a JSON syntax, so make sure it's all correct. And it was not all correct. 
there we go. So we've got our base URL. Uh, and just to be good citizens, we've modified program.cs. So we should uh, make sure that it builds before we do the second bit of change that we need to do. And the second bit of change is pretty easy. OK, so we've got a successful build. So now here is the, the fun part. Uh, going back to our code behind for the page that we created, the API list page, we no longer need most of this code. Uh, instead, what we can do is we can inject um, the API client. So uh, we want to do inject. And again, we need another prop. This time, the prop that we're passing in is of the type laser sample. And we'll keep our old convention of naming it client. Uh, and now it'll be passed in. We'll get rid of this and this. Uh, and we should also be able to get rid of this. And we should just be able to go with that. So I will we'll save and I'll do an F5 because I'm feeling very lucky that we haven't made any changes that will break things. That's going to work. All right. It looks like it is going to work. Yeah. Slash API. And there we go. It still works, still pulls in the code, uh, pulls into the pipeline. So in essence, what we've been able to do is over a very, very, very short amount of time, we've been able to take an existing API, create a client, uh, call that API, pull back data, render that data, uh, and then also make it a little bit more reusable, a little bit more friendly by making it more uh, configurable so that we can use it in multiple pages. So what happens when the API is updated? Well, it's actually pretty simple. All we have to do to go and get the latest copy is uh, over here to connected services, double click on it. That shows us all the services that we have connected and we can see that here's our Swagger one that we have. Uh, so all we need to do is click on the ellipses here and we'll, refresh. we'll get a warning that says, hey, are you sure you want to re-download it? We'll say yes. And that's it. Now we've got a newly generated client with the updated API. Um, so hopefully this will help you as you're creating API clients to create them a lot faster.